Welcome back after an ungodly long absence to Freeze All Motor Functions presented by Bolin Media. Bam. We'll get Bam. Bam. I'm your host, Jared Borislow, joined as always by the man whose idea of volunteering is baby birding SpaghettiOs into the mouths of local starving wombats, Ross Bolin. We're back, baby. We're back. People have been talking about bringing FAMF back for years. Asking incessantly, week after week, Jerry. Yes. And when I say years, I almost literally mean multiple years. Uh, July 10th, 2018 was the last day. Did we uh, put out an episode? Isn't that absurd? It, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. No. That is a very long time. That's almost two years. And yeah. I, I say almost by just like totally wiping away five months in out of there, but you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's two years, Jerry. It's, it's also like... End of winter, spring, which is like the worst months. Those are the throwaway months. Time is so relative. Yeah. They're the flyover state of months. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, oh, March. Nice. Thanks. Look out the window, honey. It's March. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been a very long time since we mm-hmm. dropped the FAMP mm-hmm. episode. Uh, a lot has changed. Uh, Yeah. No, it's uh, to the point that, Jared, I hadn't watched any of the teasers or the trailers and and just the little bit of information I've gotten has me so excited for the potential of season three of Westworld. Yeah, season three is going to be crazy. Um, I would say it's going to be poignant. It's inarguably sort of make or break because they're they're taking this huge leap. The show ended in season two, as you and I discussed many times. Like it sort of put it in a place where they could do anything, and it could get however big. Yeah. They wanted it to get in terms of scope, and man, turns out they're really doing it. They're going for it. Yeah. When yeah. Ross and I were talking off mic, because we're friends who sometimes talk when we're out of the studio. On occasion, we e- do. Ever so often, yeah. yeah. Usually it's, it involves some sort of like payment on my end. Like, hey, man, I got to pay you to appear on your podcast, because yeah, yeah. that's how it works. It's Essentially, I'm paying rent. Or he has like a gun to my head, and he's like, please, please, talk to me, please. And I'm like, Jared, I really don't want to. Just pull the trigger, kill me. Yeah. Well, we were saying, essentially, at this point, like the first two seasons of Westworld could have been a prequel. To what is now season three. Like, realistically, one and two could have been all backstory for how this robot, potentially robot world came about, and now it's... And now what happens? And now what happens? I have have no idea. But we're going full future, futuristic craziness. It's going to be nuts. I haven't watched... I've got almost no information in my head as to how this is going to look. Yes, yes. It's what Ross and I have done, and I'll get into this in a little bit, is the most honorable. Usually, I'm the one who's not a hero. But in this case, both hero. Ross and I are— I was also not a hero. But you—well, you were you were not a hero, but you weren't like, uh, I'm not a hero. It was just like— Oh, uh, yeah. It was not a humble statement. It was right. like a statement of fact. Just, I'm not a hero. Yeah. I'm like, just not a hero. When I say I'm not a hero, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not a hero. Like, come you, on, guys. You are a hero. Wink, You're saying wink, I am yeah. a hero. I'm actually saying I am not a hero. No. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. You stink. I suck. <laughs> So a lot has changed since uh, since FAMF was last around. FAMF! FAMF! The FAMF horn has not changed. That's no, still never, here. Never, Jared. Never. FAMF is no longer brought to you by Grand X Media, as Ross and I no longer work there. Upon leaving Grand X, I uh, was granted the rights to FAMF, Woo! And, and now Ross and I are working together, and FAMF, Dude. Freeze on Motor Functions, We're is so now excited. on Bolin Media, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I'm dancing. People watching the video, that's another thing. We have video now. Because we're on Bolin Media... This podcast and every single Freeze All Motor Functions podcast is going to be recorded. All season long, baby. And you can find the videos of these podcasts on YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. Oh, yeah. Did I get that, that URL that right? That is correct, sir. Every single episode of Freeze All Motor Functions that we put out that is not on Patreon, you will be able to watch on YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. Um, this one, not not in particular, but for the ones moving forward, Jared, we'll also be having Twitch as an option. Whoa, Twitch so you can watch TV it live. Slash Boss Rollin is where we've been streaming all of our other episodes of RBP and OCC. Um, it's just a kind of cool way for, you know, the percentage of the audience that wants to watch the show live on Twitch. They can. Uh, but Jared and I, like I've said, it's been it's been a very long time coming. You and I have discussed this moment for literally years. I've been talking about this moment for all my life. Oh, yeah. Lord. Very well done. And now we're here, um, and it's time to FAMF again. People yes. are excited. We we've been teasing it. We've been we've been talking about we're it. We always in the nipples. Yeah. We. <laughs> oh, you want FAMF? You like that? You like that? You like that? Kirk Cousins. Just Kirk Cousins. Just Kirk tweaking Cousins. his nips. Yeah. Oh yeah. You like that? You like that? I, he he brought it back, which I thought was weird. Like that's nipple tweaking. <laughs> yes. Or you like that? Uh, yeah. Both. Yeah. He's he's really making a lot of waves in the 
in the pumping up and also being slightly erotic circles. Yeah. Kirk Cousins. By the way, if you're new here, if you just watch Westworld and you're like, Westworld's coming, I got to find a new podcast, welcome. We are the best. Yes. That's uh, all you need to know. I don't like to, to brag because I'm not a hero or anything. You don't like to toot your own fam horn? I don't like to toot my own fam horn. Fam. We are the number one rated Westworld podcast in on Apple world. Podcasts. In all the world. Doesn't mean that we're the coolest. Just kidding, it does. We we're are the, the coolest, the, the best, best one, most effective one. I'm doing air quotes. Um, I'm reading quotes from the New York Times and other major publications. Um, greatest of all time with a goat emoji next to it is another review I'm seeing here from a yeah. very major publication. Yeah, dude, that one was from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. The former president uh, also said that it was uh, the only thing that, that helped me understand what was happening on a, this crazy show. current president said, it's the very best. It's absolutely incredible. You can't believe what these guys are doing. This is the very best good. podcast. If you're watching Westworld, there is no other podcast you should be watching. Everyone says it. This is the very best podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and review. But also just remember, there is no comparison. This is the best. The best. The For those best. of you who have been wondering what the shiz your beloved hosts have been up to, uh, Bolin Media is the media company Ross founded and has worked on full-time since leaving Grand X. Yeah, we did it. We, we fucking did it. Yeah. With ventures such as uh, Freeze on Motor Functions, obviously. Yeah. The Ross Bolin Podcast, which I co-host. Yeah. And another podcast about Game of Thrones and now television in general called Oysters, Clams, and Cuckolds. Did which, I say that right? It is correct. Yes. Oysters, Clams, and Cuckolds. Uh, co cockles, sorry. And uh, no, there's uh, there's been some confusion there, Jared. People are asking, are you going to discuss Freeze or Westworld on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles? The answer is no. We will be discussing it in great, great, great detail here on Freeze All Motor Functions, our Westworld podcast. Mm -hmm. OCC will continue to be focused on TV and film outside the Westworld. And now we may spend two, three minutes saying, wow, Westworld was baller last night. Go listen to FAMP. Yeah. But this Fam. is the place for Westworld, all things Westworld, Freeze All Motor Functions. It should go without saying. But just in case there was some confusion there, this is your Westworld pod. Mm -hmm. Always and forever. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I work a full-time marketing gig now, but on the side, I do this podcast, like I said, co-host Ross Bolin Podcast, as well as run the at Tinder Convos Instagram page for funny dating app conversations. I'll be plugging that all year long, so go follow it so you can fulfill that obligation. At Tinder Convos. At Tinder Convos. And also, fun fact, Ross is going to love this. I'm obsessed with disc golf now. Absolutely obsessed. I play it at least twice a week. Guarantee you there are going to be disc golf references on this year of the show. So If you're, if you're asking yourself, what do you say? Disc golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Frisbee or the disc. Jared's in the forest. He's out there getting it. Yeah, me and me and the pixies and the what are the hobbits, right? Uh, all the other creatures from Narnia. Yeah. Well, what? Narnia? Narnia? Yeah. Does Narnia have hobbits? No, but Narnia had good woodland creatures that would definitely yeah, play yeah, yeah. disc golf with you. No, like, for sure. What was that guy's name? Mr. I'm going to look up some Narnia names. Jared, you do your thing. Mr. Mr. Tumnus. Tumnus. <laughs> I don't know why I knew that. The big brain on Jared. Thank you. Yeah, this is also a Chronicles of Narnia podcast, but only The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah, we don't, don't fuck with any of the nothing others. Nothing after that, because here's the deal. Mm. I love a good wardrobe. Me too. Big fan. Cozy in there as well. Speaking of wardrobe, merch. That's going to be something that happens at some point. We'll make t-shirts, we'll <laughs> make hats, yeah. we'll make stickers or whatever the fuck. If you still want the Westworld as a sport t-shirt, hit me up. Cause a lot of, <laughs> That's a good... And it, it's going to be, say, Westworld as a sport, and instead of the Olympic rings, it's going to be the Westworld... This, this logo, the, our circular... Freeze all murder functions logo. It's the power F is what I call it. The power F. Yeah. That's the power the F. Power That's F. our logo. Yeah. That's power F sounds like a category on a certain website that has pornography on it. You're sick minded. That's I'm the just, only reason you think that I'm way. I bet saying. all the other people listening were like, That's a good wholesome name, Ross. <laughs> As far as what all these changes I just said mean for the show, we're back doing this pod two months before season three, like two goody goody gumdrop boys. Famp. So you know Famp is alive and well. We're still ironing out all the details and all the red tape and the and the check marks and the and the boxes and the and the scheduling and planning. Yeah. Yeah, we are. But we'll get Phil there. Philosophizing, but we'll get there. Months away, Jared. Months. Uh, like, I, like I said earlier, what you can expect, every podcast will be on video, mm. uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. you bowl media YouTube page. Mm -hmm. The cold line will be back. It might be a different number. But I'm going to do my best to take the same number, even if that means I have to go and find some sort of telemarketing firm that has stolen it since then. I think I can probably make this happen. I think I can make this happen. Oh, my gosh. I'm good at this. I've, the hotline thing, I've done battle for six fucking months with these people. Now I've got it down. Pat. Okay. Yeah, that's, we need to get that. I don't know. Also, if you're curious, cold line is our hotline. Yeah. Oh, see? It's a cold line. If you're new here, Westworld, get it, jokes, we make them sometimes. It's not a hotline. It's a cold line. Freeze. The motor functions. Yeah. Cold. You see what we're doing here. People see. Yeah, I feel like I'm doing Please a bad clap. job. Please clap. 
Thank you. I feel like I'm doing a bad job for new listeners, right? Like, I'm doing good though. No, you're crushing I've it. I've got your back. I'm like That's what I'm here for. I love it. I it's I was like totally forgetting that there's people like new listeners. I always forget. Hashtag there, teamwork. But yes, there will be a lot of y'all who are, who are new here for Westworld that uh, that are looking for a podcast for season three and you found the right place. Welcome. Enjoy the cold line. Here's why you pick us over the other podcasts. If I'm just gonna do a cold pick, like not the the other podcasts, I promise you aren't saying why they're why you should listen to them off the bat, right? Probably not. Like, or I should say, they're saying why you should listen to them, but not why you shouldn't listen to the other to ones. the other shows. But yeah. that's how we open. That's how we open. It's called strength. So, Power F. We come in heavy. <laughs> we shit on all the other shows to prop ourselves up. The American way. We are the one that you come to if you want all the same depth and analysis and details, but you don't want to deal with oh metaphysics and uh, oh quantum mechanics of the of the braid of the bicameral. We're we're gonna help you understand the show, but also have fun. We're, we have fun here. This is the point of our show is to make you laugh. The medium is Westworld talk. There you go, Jerry. Yeah, and also to be clear for those of you who are uh, if you're new here or you're not, for those of you who aren't new here, you know. I come in every week um, thoroughly confused, yeah, and I leave having Jared given me the explanation for things that I didn't understand, feeling much more better about the show, and in turn, that's sort of how it works for y'all. So if you, there are those of you who listen and you know everything that's going on. You understand everything, you just need a place mm-hmm. to laugh and have more discussion, that's great. There are those of you who are watching Westworld like me, and when the episode ends, you go, what? And then you come yeah, here. Tim the Toolman. The next day or whatever, and, and you get your pot on, and you'll, you'll understand, because Jared will help you, and you'll laugh at us along the way, and it's a good time, so... You'll enjoy Westworld. You'll enjoy FAMP. It's going to be a great season three. It is. It truly, truly is. I'm very excited about it. There's going to be some bonus content, too. Get into that later. FAMP! FAMP! Okay, now time to get into the trailer talk. Let's do this. So here's the deal. I saw the teaser trailer Mm -hmm. when it came out. Yes. And I thought Ross and I were on the same page. I think I saw it, too, Jerry. It was just a really long time ago, yeah. Well, either way, that's the only one I watched because I said, after that first one came out, I said, wow, I'm not a hero, and because of that, me and Ross, who is not a hero, mm. not a hero, are going to not watch any trailers. Pure. We're not going to watch any trailers because we're going to do a podcast. When we come back, our first one when we come back yeah. is going to be our on-air live reactions yeah. to the trailers. Now, I want you to, to let that sink in for a second. Okay? Yes. The two dudes who run the number one rated Westworld podcast on Apple Podcasts right. didn't watch the Westworld trailers for months out of self-sacrifice for the listeners. Yes. No Not other podcast heroes. is doing that. Not heroes. None. Not heroes. We're the only one. A lot of people would say, well, well, uh, yeah, like the other ones aren't going to do it because then they can't provide any analysis analysis in between, Thoughts. you know, in like the six months in yeah. between. Like it's, it's, it's preposterous. And to that I say, probably. Here's the thing they didn't consider. They all, they're all that analysis six months ago. Nobody cares. Dude, Nobody remembers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that tweet that guy sent out. Come this on. is now it matters. We're on the verge, the cusp of the season. We need this trailer analysis now. Yes. Not then. The fuck were they thinking? Yes. Idiots. It's it's true. You don't want to call them idiots, Jared. No, no, no. Idiots. I would not. <laughs> you don't want to. You have to. The dumbest. <laughs> so what we're gonna do on this episode, we're going to play. The four trailers. There was the original teaser, the San Diego Comic Con trailer, uh, the then there was the Insight Anthem trailer. I don't even know what that is. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have no idea what that I is. I hope it's a music video. And then there was the most recent date announcement. <laughs> I do hope it's a music video. Is it Nickelback? It might be. Oh, okay. The Insight Anthem sounds like a, like oh it's a mashup like between between like uh, Nickelback and uh, My Imagine Chemical Dragons. Romance. Oh, I was gonna say like it's like you know how Imagine Dragons is sort of the new Nickelback. Yeah. That sounds like a song where they like got together. They were like, "We'll bring the, be- the most, the best of the old and the new." The, Just fucking everybody will have dude, cheese coming out of their noses when the song's ends. If you're telling me "Insight Anthem" isn't the name of the next single from Imagine Dragons, I am. I didn't even think about that, Jared. I don't even know what it sounds like, and I already love it. I'm inciting, yeah. Bum 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 bum. That's the inside anthem, <laughs> right there. If you want that track, you have to call us. That's also Bowling Media property. You haven't been spoken into this microphone. <laughs> Uh, uh, we, we, Jared and I will happily provide you with it for the small cost of 500k. Let's say $500,000. Yes. You can have the, the Ins- lyrics to Inside, Inside <laughs> Anthem, which Jared just wrote on the fly. <laughs> You're very welcome. Enjoy uh, the gold record. No other podcast from no. Westworld is no. going to be no, writing Jared. Imagine Dragon podcasts <laughs> mid, mid recording. It's just preposterous even to We assume. just wrote an Imagine Dragons hit mid show. Yeah. That's how it goes. God, we're so good. Best. I can't believe we didn't do this for so long. We could, right. be, we could have been making a lot of money just no solely shit. licensing and syndicating our, our music. Really, we should have just been an Imagine Dragons podcast between seasons, and it was a mistake. Next time. 
<laughs> see, see, season three and a half. Yep. That's get where we're at. Get ready. That's where we're at. Okay. So let's watch these fuckers. Here's let's, the get, first, let's get excited. For the first trailer, that is the one everybody remembers because it was like, oh my God, the first thing we've seen in like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it going. And we're going to knee jerk reactions. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk as we watch. Yes. Now, this is the one we've seen. This is the one we've both seen. Yeah. Mike, you can play it. We'll you talk as we watch and then talk after. Yeah. So we meet Aaron Paul here, right? Yes. This is the one we found out. Aaron Paul's going to be our star. He's, he's got a, is that a gas can? Is he a sort of mechanic? What lunch is that? pail, perhaps. Uh, probably a lunch he's pail. He's walking to work. He does have a mechanic style uniform on. Be weird if he was walking down the street with a gas can. <laughs> yeah, people would. People That's would a be futuristic, it's a self driving motorcycle. motorcycle. He has a robot friend, looks like Chappie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pause, 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 Mike, pause. Got a point to make pause here. Pause, Mike. Um, we've got, we got something to say. Are, uh, uh, Apex Legends, <laughs> the video game I play every night, I'm obsessed yeah. with it. There's a character on Apex called Pathfinder. Aaron Paul's robot buddy on that bridge is just Pathfinder really? from Apex Legends, which I'm obsessed with and has me twice as psyched. Yeah. Is this his boy? Is this his robot buddy, or is it just like a coworker situation? Like he, is, you know what I mean? Or is this going to be a? Are there? Is there going to be heavy robot yes. involvement? So here's my my knee jerk reaction. My, I just kicked the table. My knee is absolutely jerking right Shut now. Up. Oh, sorry, Ross. Sorry. Ah. So here's here's what I think. I uh -huh, think that uh -huh. in this he's kind of sitting there with his uh, eating his little lunch lunch break perhaps. Lunch break. And this is a lot like that old iconic photo of like the you know the two construction workers playing golf on a beam. Yes, yes, that's very much a thing. Yeah. There, there's all kinds of beautiful photos and paintings of that type of the, the guys building New York City. It's yes. usually New York City at the top of the skyscrapers or whatever. Yeah. So, to me, what I took from this is this is not his robot friend. I think he does this job and he works alongside robots, but the robots have no like talking, no emotions, and he it's like kind of showing lonely how lo alone yes, he exactly. is. Exactly. Like, oh, we're, this is a future where you are literally you essentially because you work with robots, you turn into a robot. Oh. You have wow. nobody you have nobody to talk to, you have nobody to to That's interact deep. with during the day. That's deep. And it's like, oh, we're not automating jobs away. You really are because you're making people work with robots. So, who and then the people become robots. Now, this is a very important um concept because in our day in, in our day and age with with all the technological advances and it's a concern. People are worried about, all right, when is the point where we created the robots and then they turn on us and we're the, we get fucked? And, and they are perhaps exploring that element on Westworld. Yes. What will this future look like where robots are more prevalent and how will that affect humans and all the different AI that comes with it? And, of course, if you're, if you're saying to yourself, my God, that is such a complicated subject to attack – that will be probably 10% of the show. I, I really feel like automation and like the, where robots fit into society based on a there's, – there's a balance you need to find between productivity and sanity. And safety, yeah. Yeah, like obviously, you know, automation is great for productivity. It makes people – makes things go quickly, things go more quickly, quickly, less mistakes, less human error, sure. Yeah. But, but uh, Terminator. We might go – yes, Terminator might go crazy. Pathfinder. Let's keep going. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Mike, bring us bring us back. And, in I, and I also think that what they're saying throughout this is also a lot like that. Like, oh, I'm, I feel like bored. Like, well, they got the Pink Floyd song going. F fantastic song, by the way. The whole album. This looks very hosty with the, the, the waiter walking through. Mm -hmm. Waitress. Okay, so Aaron Paul appears to be some kind of robber. Yes, some kind of. Looks like he's a worker by day the and like a, a bank at Robin night. Hood maybe type deal. He's got a squad. He's got a motorcycle. motorcycle as well. He hits clubs. People Doing are drugs. taking drugs, yeah. sexy Molly drugs, flying That's spaceships. That's a really cool spaceship. A guy pointing a gun in his face. Oh, it looks like Dolores shooting two people Executing on the ground. Executing two people. Kid Cuddy! Kid Cuddy's in this pause motherfucker. It. Pause it. Cuddy's what? back. That's huge. Kid Cuddy is in Westworld Season 3. Huge. But as we've discussed many, many times, HBO people, it's the place to score a show. If you're on an HBO show, you have a very good chance of being on a future HBO show. Is that is that how that works? There's... Yes, huh. yes, it's insane. Every HBO show has prior HBO show people in it. It's nuts. Yeah. They, it's like a it's a great place to get in as an actor. They will continue bringing you back if you fit the parts. Um, I wanted to say Jeffrey Wright was a great example, but now I can't think of another HBO thing he was in. So I'm just gonna keep my mouth as, shut. As far as doing like kind of knee jerk style like this, you know, you kind we miss out on the dialogue and the, the dialogue. Of really, what he's saying kind it of is, is like. You know, the future, this future, I guess this world he lives in is just like kind of boring and like very structured. And it, it seems like he's trying to like find some sort of escape to make his life more interesting, which he, I think is probably why he's a some sort of criminal. Yeah, he doesn't man. seem fulfilled, Jared. 
He doesn't. No, he does not. Even you, you think his robot friend would at least make like you know like claptrap from uh, Borderlands, like make some cool, funny little jokes, like "Hey, I'm claptrap." Yeah. And ask me to tell you a joke. Claptrap walked so that Pathfinder could fly, though. Just for the can Pathfinder fly? Up. Also, literally. You yes. know what? Can we just? This Zip is line. such a dumb segment. Is <laughs> is Pathfinder a complete ripoff of Claptrap? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably, probably. Claptrap is one of the best Man, video game Claptrap. characters. Look, look at this dude. I'm trying to see what's about to happen here. Okay, I have yeah, no idea. Go, it's go. killing Sorry. me. Aaron let's Paul's go. like sitting at this table okay. looking very upset. With, talking to Kit oh, Cuddy. that's what the Cuddy one was. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. The vehicle looks at The additions. vehicles. That looks like the Cybertruck from Elon Musk. Yep. Now look. Look at this scene. Jesse Pinkman is sleeping, wakes up just like the hosts do in Westworld, where they, it's a shot over their head of them laying in bed and mm-hmm. their eyes open up. So do you think he's a host? No. Okay. But I think that they did that intentionally. Now Into he encounters the teaser, Dolores. He, he encounters finds Dolores, Dolores in, in a tunnel. Yes. Which presumably is before the scene we saw earlier where she offs two people or after. I don't know. I think it's after. after she got injured in the fight. she's struggling. Yeah, she's yeah. struggling. She's leaning up against the wall. So the setup from the first trailer is essentially this. We've got Jesse Pinkman in the future. Uh, I'm sorry, Aaron Paul in the future. Yeah, it's gonna be um, tough. We don't I'm know who his character yet. is. We don't know who his character is. We don't know anything about him. He appears to be some kind of mechanic, low-level uh, uh, employee that then at night is making moves as a criminal. Um, he meets Dolores at the very end. Clearly, we're in a futuristic world where there's flying cars, flying crazy airplanes, Elon Musk style shit everywhere, and dude is miserable. And and that's the you have to assume that that trailer is sort of the setup for the season as well, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's the setup for the season. It makes me think this season is we're gonna first learn about Aaron Paul's character. Yep. Learn through his character about the entire future. Like, yep. How what every- is our situation here? Exactly. How everything's run. How structured everything is. How like maybe kind of like. Uh, you know what's what's the term I'm looking for? Like uh, eh, the me- authoritarian? Sure, maybe. Yeah. Like what's the government situation? The yeah. political situation? The social situation? He needs to introduce us to because that's the thing with Westworld one and two. We were always so frustrated. Like you know, we get the park and it's crazy. This park and all the shit that exists and we see the structure, the corporate structure of it all. So clearly, the outside world is very advanced, and we always wanted to know. What, the what does it fuck? look like what out the there? What the fuck does it look like out what there? What does the world look like where when you vacation to Westworld to fucking murder pretend cowboy people, what's the rest of the world look like? And now we're going to see, but they have to. That's the the first big challenge for this show, season three, is utilizing episode one and Aaron Paul to do exactly what you yeah. just said. Set us up to where we understand exactly what we're dealing with. Then, presumably, toward the tail end of episode one, if not the very end, yep. we make our connection with Dolores and let shit kind of roll from there. Yeah. I'm guessing we got we got a lot of glimpses into what the outside world looked like in season two, but we did not get anything about the society, anything about the it's just kind of like you know cityscapes and shit. Basically, yeah, we got that look at the very end of the season. And well, and when he was like when they were doing Actually, the yeah, that's true. Right, but well, that was before they that was before was they throughout. funded it, right? Like right. before they gave the funding, and so it's you know a few years before. So I don't, I don't think we don't even know how many years before, right? Well, they, they look similar. But, they do, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, we do. It, I think as far as actors go, like I don't think they were doing a crazy job of like making them look that different. So right. it really could have been like ten years. It's a I weird thing for us too, because like you know when we were little kids, when you watched the Jetsons, and you expected by twenty twenty we'd all be in flying cars yes. and walking on the fuck. Um, well, we're not. We do uh, have hoverboards. We do, which, but that's which all. Light a flame. That's all we've got. Uh, we've done, we did a horrible job. The automotive industry failed, and then we we're just now recovering from that. So we didn't really get any of that shit. No, the future isn't now. It turns out it's still later. And Westworld, for that reason, I'm looking forward to see. This will be the first, like, name the last futuristic thing you saw. Probably uh, uh, that Harrison Ford movie with Ryan Gosling, too. What was oh, that called? Like, God. Timestamp 2021 or whatever. Yeah, it was a famous movie. Mike knows. Timestamp um, 2021. It wasn't That's called what I just said. Blade Runner. Blade Blade Runner. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Same thing. Timestamp, Blade Runner. Um, but, yeah, no, there's not, I haven't seen a really good futuristic, yes. Yes. like, take me there. Yeah. And I'm ready with Aaron Paul. So I think Aaron Paul is, like... This is what the world is like, and then this is a guy who's going against it and, like, being count like, you know. Or he's miserable in it. Now what does he do about it? Yeah, I don't know if it's, like, I agree. I don't know if it's, like, he's miserable. He beca- It looked like they were pretty structured. Like, he had a squad. It makes me think he is. Very organized. He's normal during the day, and at night or on occasion, he goes and does his, like, countercultural, uh, like, anti-establishment stuff. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I like that. And I think through him, we get the idea of, like, we see what a normal person's like. But this is the guy who's doing something about it, and then he encounters Dolores, and then I have absolutely Everything goes crazy. I don't know what the hell happens then. You have to imagine they bone. 
You, I mean, you kind of do have. Are to you imagine. scared about Aaron Paul? Just very quickly, are you scared about Aaron Paul as an actor, as the casting uh, uh, decision for this? Clearly, he's not maybe not the main character, but he's the main character that's not the main character. So, um, are you worried? I need you to rant on this because I've actually never seen Breaking Bad. Okay, so Breaking Bad was phenomenal. Aaron Paul's character, unbelievable, one of the greatest of all time. Everything he's done since has been an utter and massive failure. Like so what? every movie he's done has been trash. He's done many, many movies, attempts at being an A-list actor. He did Need for Speed. It was terrible. Every single project he has undertaken, aside from Breaking Bad's uh, El, Dorado, what, El DeLorean, El Dorado. Oh, he's Bojack Horseman. <laughs> El Camino. Bojack Horseman's popular. Bojack Horseman does not count, though. That's animated. Um, everything has been a disaster. So Aaron Paul, as an actor is still trying to find where he fits. And this strikes me as his best opportunity for success since Breaking Bad in terms of I, uh, what I understand about him as a character actor, his limitations, his, his abilities. I think this is a very good spot for him. It's a very good opportunity to reestablish his career. He was one of the best and still arguably is actors on television to reestablish himself um, and, and show people like, look, I wasn't, I'm not Jon Snow. Yeah. I'm not Kit Harrington. I can actually act. I just needed another vehicle that works and is good. So I'm I'm to my point, I was scared up front about it about Aaron Paul being the cast member. Now I'm excited. I think it gives them a really good opportunity that he ended up in a really good spot where it can sort of be a springboard for not just him but for the show as well. Like people will be stoked if it's if it works, and we have to assume it will, it's HBO, it's Westworld, that Aaron Paul it's it's like doubles the excitement because you're getting to see a guy revitalize his career at the same time the show yep. having success with season three. Before we move on to the next trailer, which is the San Diego Comic Con trailer, I have a question, and I and I don't know the answer to this, and it, I don't, we we're not supposed to yet. He obviously works alongside a robot, so he knows like robots are crazy advanced. When he mm -hmm. encounters Dolores, do you think he knows she's a robot? That'll be the interesting thing to see because well, I'm gonna guess yes. Based on his experience with robots, that that's how, how he gets the feel for that she's maybe. But how would he? Why would he even question it in the first place that she's a robot? Like, do you, well, that's do, do you have to know. question everything? We don't know what the setup is, so we yeah. don't know yet. Like, are there a bunch of fucking Dolores style people in this world? We have to imagine not. Yeah. That she escaped from this park. She was a very serious and real threat to now everyone else, and then this dude discovers her. Yeah. And then where does he go from there? And then the complicated relationship that ensues, I assume. And we also have whoever the control units are. No idea. No idea. No yeah. idea. No. You want to do the next yeah, one? Yes, let's do the next one. San Diego Comic-Con trailer. This one dropped six months ago at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, you know what I was doing six months ago, Ross? I was going through your trash. So I saw you sneeze uh, when I was looking through your window one night. Okay. And I wanted to make sure you weren't sick as oh. any good friend. Yeah, I was just caring. Yeah. So I had to grab a tissue out of your trash and take it to a diagnostic clinic for testing. Right. Um, the results were inconclusive, so I'm not actually sure if you're sick. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I accidentally grabbed an unused Chipotle napkin out of the trash and oh, set up the Kleenex. <laughs> I know. Sure, next time. Crazy. But it's going to be $8,200 for the testing. Uh, well, of course. That's reasonable enough. So sure. if you want to Venmo. Please stop digging through my trash. I see you. The window's right there. I, I watch. I want you to see. You watching me watch watching me. <laughs> watching you. Is that how that goes? Oh, whatever, man. Yeah, let's go play the next <laughs> Let's play the next trailer. Rest of the episode, we're, we're going to play that song. We're not? Okay, we need to listen here. Okay, hold on. I'll listen. Okay, there are machines in this world. They're like us, I think is what you said. Futuristic landscape. Hot water. Chicago, perhaps? Oh, look who uh, it is. Okay, Mike, I'm going to need you to pause this. But we don't know who she is. Because remember, she was... She was Dolores. Yeah, it's going to get real confusing, Jared. <laughs> that's why we need is the podcast. Is that still Dolores? That's got to be... Wait, who is the other Dolores? Okay. That's what doesn't make sense. We, 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 we don't know. We don't the, know. Okay, the other Dolores could have been any of the seven control units. Any of them. What if What if the other Dolores are shooting people? Maybe the other Dolores is Hector. So, it, I, I don't want to mess with that too much. Are they going <laughs> to give us, like, we all got to switch back into our own bodies? Like, I don't want to deal with that. That's so confusing. Please. That is so confusing. Please, no. But th this has to be either... Charlotte was her OG name, right? Yeah, Charlotte okay. Hale. Charlotte Hale, and what we knew was Charlotte Hale, Dolores had gotten into Charlotte Hale's body or was using her control unit or whatever to get herself into the real world, but we're seeing obviously actual Dolores at this point too. Maybe we have a multiple timeline situation here, Jared. I was thinking this could be Charlotte before she got Dolores. Yep. I'm thinking the entire- We get some past, yeah. look into the setup of the company perhaps. Yes. Maybe we do a little bit of back and forth skis. We've done that a lot so far. We have. Now, I, I, I do not want- the, the I don't want Westworld season three. 
They're turning mm-hmm. to, to turn into essentially Tobias Funke's The Man Inside Me, where it's just a bunch of people inside other people. No, that's what that's, we want to That's going to be very confusing. That's Here's something I've realized upon watching this. Because you and I literally have never seen this before, yeah. we shouldn't do live commentary for the ones we haven't seen. We need to hear the audio. Yeah. I realized that. I was like, Rush, shut up. No, I need to hear this. Yeah. So, but do you? Let's go back to the beginning. Yes. Okay. okay. No live commentary. Immediate response afterwards. I won't say a word. I won't say a word. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I was, I, was, I was trying to say shut the fuck up. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, let's go. I'm we shutting my this. fuck up. <laughs> okay. Music. Shut up. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So they're being searched for. Yeah. Oh, they have to be, yeah. Ooh. Wow, it's something totally different. I'm That's thinking. who she kills in the tunnels, who yes. tried to find her. Jesse Pinkman. Then we got Pinkman. It froze. Hope. It froze. Oh, no. It froze. I... Oh, oh, unfroze. Oh, oh. oh. We're good. I was We're trying good. to catch up. <laughs> oh, our boy. Jeffrey Wright. I came back. Oh, Maeve dropping the classic Maeve line. And suddenly we're in like the roaring 20s. That's Nazis. Nazi, Nazi Germany. Germany. Ah! Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do all this. This is going to be crazy as hell. I can't wait. The little black dress on, uh, on Char- what's her name? Help me, Mike. Actress? Evan Rachel Wood. My God. Okay, so... Is that Adam Driver? Dude, no. <laughs> you see a robot being executed. Oh my god. Other giant robots. Riot control. Stubbs! Whoa. Hector. Jeffrey and Hector fighting. Jeffrey Wright and Hector fighting. Oh, this Nazi Germany shit is going to be the coolest thing I've ever seen. There's our dude. Oh, shit, that guy. I fucking love that guy. Who is that guy? He's an incredible actor. Okay. Uh, it's it's hard to explain how little Ross and I looked into Westworld intentionally for this purpose so we could give our live response. Nazi Germany. I, I, I'm pretty sure I asked for that a hundred times. <laughs> Every time somebody's like, what park do you want to see? I was like, yeah, World War II. Like, I want to see World War II park. Like, yeah, we cool discussed the different parks that would make sense in terms of would people want to go experience this yes. would it be fun would it be and that's an interesting one because it i wonder what the like what is the why would you be enticed to go to world war ii world i to be in war i think it's because it's so it's such a romantic not romantic i guess romanticized but not in like a romantic reasons. way Will we have guests who are anti-Semites? Will we have guests who are just want to kill the Nazis because they're Jewish and maybe that's a thing? Like the, to go get your rocks yeah, off. You pick the Nazis. Nazi side. Can you go in and be like, I yes. want to be a Nazi, dude? The same way on Westworld, you could come in slanging, you know, black hat or white hat. Indeed, it's the exact same. You can rock the SS patch or you can rock the star. I have no idea what the setup is going to be. That's why looking at a fucking Nazi Germany Westworld is so wild. I'm glad it's Maeve. Yeah. She's the most capable to handle the Nazis, probably. Yeah. Unless oh. she's one of them. I don't know. What the fuck? Dude. I ha- Nazis. Didn't see gonna... Nazis coming, Jared. I didn't either. And he, this is one of those... This is the thing about Westworld. Uh, we just watched that trailer. And obviously, we know a lot about a lot about all these characters. Sure. A lot about the show. Sure we do. I, I would have to watch that at least five more times. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I w- yeah. and I'm obviously going to now. That it's, This is like breaking the seal. You know, like now I'm just going to watch this now on repeat yes, yes, all day, yes. every day. When you pee-pee when you're drunk is what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, there was there was Ford created us all for a reason. I'm coming back to make sure she doesn't harm. Like, what is 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 Arnold or not? Well, you're Arnold, making mistake number Bernard one. Bernard coming back. Mistake number one. Never ever ever 
listen to the dialogue and trailers. It doesn't do shit. It's confusing. They take bits and pieces from different conversations throughout the season, and they try to make it sound as interesting as they can. That's it. So anything you're trying to derive from dialogue and trailers is typically, especially in Westworld, is just going to mislead you. It's going to make you start trying to pull at threads that probably aren't even in the show. So it's like what you said at the front, like we need to hear this, but yeah, we also don't. All I give a shit is what they're showing us. Because you know that's going to be in the show. I know it's there. I know it matters. I know it's real. And they can't use bits and pieces from other conversations to make it confusing. You're spoken me. like a true Game of Thrones podcaster. I've done You've this. You've done this so I'm many times. I'm a professional. Times. I'm a professional. The trailers are very confusing and they can be very misleading. So we just want the general setup and, that, it, and, and the hype, right? That trailer was incredibly well done. A minute and a half in, suddenly you're like, I don't know that I could be any more excited. And then they're like, well, here are the Nazis. And it's like, holy shit. That How was, many timelines? I don't. Dude, I don't know. We, well, we okay. We got Maeve. There was Ashley Stubbs is there. He, but do we think? Okay, here's a, here's the main question. You brought this up. A great point. Do we think that a lot of this season is dedicated to the search in the real world to kill the hosts who escaped? That's what I would have to imagine. Like. That is one of the major storylines in this season. Is that they know the company, um, which is which is Delos. What is it? Delos. Delos. Is that right? Yeah. Delos. Why is it? So, it's more complicated in my head. Um, Dolores and Delos are way too yeah, we talked fucking about that. stupid. They have to be. They have. They know these people have escaped. They have to control the situation. That's absolutely going to be one of the timelines. They've got the riot fucking robot out there and shit. Was that? Is that Charlotte Hale? We don't know. That, that, that we don't is, know. There's no way for us to know. That's see. That's got to be Charlotte Hale. Hale though, or it's Dolores posing as Charlotte Hale. Hale before the. But they have to know twistiness that Charlotte Hale, like they got to be on the lookout for Charlotte Hale. Hale, Hale. I don't know, Hale? and that's the thing Hale with Caesar. The, okay, so I'll say this: a concern from that trailer. You get ten episodes, maybe. How many eight, are they doing? Eight. Okay, eight. this has become a bigger and bigger theme. People keep doing eight fucking episodes, which is fine. How are you going to pack well, all that? Fine. It's not fine for us because we get less ad reads in. Sure, we make less money. It is yeah, a problem. HBO, if you could go back up to ten, we'd appreciate. Thank that. you. Um, but. It is a that is a lot of trailer, bro, to get me to understand through through eight episodes. Now, Westworld, phenomenal show, unbelievably well executed. But if you were gonna make a complaint, this is gonna be very very confusing. Which is again why you need this podcast. I need season three to not. I need it to have a more co like a better ending. When it ends, I need it to be better than season two. That's what I'm saying. Season two was good. But it was a bit of a sophomore slump in terms of, like, what do we do with this world? Season one is the best episode was of it, TV ever. It was it's, great. It's inc- the way they tied everything together. Season two, you, it's, you can't follow up season one, but they did it, they, they did it as well they as they could. They did a could. great job. It was a very fun, incredibly entertaining season of TV. It just didn't, when it ended, I was like, okay. But it was, this is the thing you and I sort of recognized through the first teaser when it dropped. Well, all that could have, it, it literally could just serve as a prequel. Like you said at the beginning of the podcast. It's all set up. And if you get the setup right, that's a that's where you get beautiful TV. From what I've seen so far, I think season three could possibly be I, the best season yet. And I think I think it's by far going to be the most visually stunning season yet. These all these images we're seeing of like cityscapes and like all the futuristic technology and all the CGI and then and Nazi Germany. I mean, if if you can nail a bio a bio a biopic as Ross calls a them, biopic. it's biopic. But Ross refuses to not call them biopic. It's a biopic biopic if you can nail a nazi essentially like period piece within it with within, within the show this show i mean you see you saw the, the 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 wardrobe you saw the the machinery and this has always been the one of the best things about westworld visually they do an incredible job with the casting the costumes the the the, the scenery the cgi all of it is beautifully done and they've clearly taken it all a big step up but if you look back there was a ton of great shit it was just so much desert, so much uh, yeah. open West Plains type of shit that you didn't appreciate it as much as you will the insanity in season three with the cityscapes and the future and whatnot. Yeah. Imagine if I told you, yeah, this show that you just watched uh, a trailer for, if you'd never seen season one or two, yeah, it's called Westworld. Right. Like, yeah. what? Well, we always <laughs> asked that. We were, like, we were like, what's going to happen when we bust out? Are they still going to call it Westworld? And, like, obviously it'll always be called yeah. Westworld. Yeah. That was a stupid fucking question. I apologize. I was naive and young. It was yeah. three years ago-ish. Yeah, so that, what we just, what I watched, and you saw my live reaction, I'm sure somebody might cut a video of that, of my reaction to Nazi World. Nazi World. That was, that was unbelievable. I, that made me so excited. 
And now it's time for an ad read, baby. First sponsor. Do it. First sponsor of season three. Yeah. And this is the one I like a lot. I like all our sponsors a lot. All of them. But I like this one a lot too. Do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain or have trouble sleeping at least once a week? Literally all those things, Jared. Yeah, if you respond, no, you're a lying liar who lies. Wow. Uh, Because literally everyone struggles with all of those things, if not most of those things. At least one of them. At least one. Personally, like many people, I sometimes get overwhelmed at large gatherings and need to take a quick breather to recharge. Maybe go sit on the toilet and scroll Twitter for a little bit, just like get the brain right, you know? Sure, sure. Fortunately enough, I received my Feels CBD test flight that they send to podcasters oh, yeah. so the podcasters can try Feels ahead of their ad read. Oh, yeah. I-, I got that test flight right before going to a large wedding a few weeks ago. I was like, okay, well, pretty good timing here, you know? Get some CBD up in Yeah. And I could tell when I got it, I tried it out. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. So good, in fact, that I literally brought it with me to the wedding because oh. I wanted to see if Feels could make it so that I didn't have to leave, recharge. Go sure. text Ross and say leave early, f- yeah. hide in the bathroom, send a text, fuck all that. Text Ross, say hey, can you come pick me up? Help me, Dad. <laughs> you're like Jared. You're you're in Pennsylvania, Dad. <laughs> he calls me Dad. Lo and behold, it worked. The CBD worked, uh, and I mean CBD work. Obviously, Feels. it always works, but Feels. I could really see the result it had in my body, which is why I really recommend that you try Fields' products. And like I said, they're fam's first. The flight Sponsor. thing they send you is awesome, yeah. by the way. It gives you a really good feel for exactly how much feels you need uh, to get where you want to be and to, to feel the calming effects and all the other great things that CBD is, does for you. So um, I highly recommend trying out the flight. It's, yeah. uh, it's got different strengths. So you can see what works for you. Feels what, what... Was, it was my first CBD experience, and it was a great one. It was, it was uh, uh, everything I wanted, everything I'd heard about, that all the benefits of CBD and, and feels brought it to, my, uh, to me. So I love the flight. Great shit. You've probably heard a lot about CBD. You, you know, this, you might as well try it. It's a very trendy thing, and we have a code for you. We do. That I'll get to discount, in a second. Discount, baby. I got I to gotta tease the code. Big Just kidding. The co- well, it's F-E-A-L-S.com slash freeze. Uh, you can become a member through that link and get 50% freeze. automatically taken off your first order. What is Feels? And it's spelled F-E-A-L-S, not mm. F-E-E-L-S, Ross. F-E-A-L-S. F-E-A-L-S. Feels. Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. What does it do? It helps you naturally reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. It works great for instances of social anxiety as well, as I can say from experience. Place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. It really is that easy. The best way to do it is put it under your tongue. Don't get it like mixed into your drink because your body can't process it as well. No, you put it right under your tongue, let it sit, and yeah. you swallow, and you're good. You're going to feel the effects pretty much instantly. Right under the tongue, baby. Oh. Uh, real human support they have is if you're new to CBD, Feels offers a free CBD hotline, a cold line, a free CBD cold line and text message support to help guide your personal experience. It can be confusing. Like I said, I mean, a lot of people, you'll see, like, oh, CBD coffee, CBD cornflakes, whatever. Like, there's a lot to take in. You're like, wait, do I eat it? Do I put it on my skin? Do I drink it? Do I... That's why you want feels. Yeah, yeah. Feels take care of you, baby. They help take care of you. Just a couple drops. You'll feel better naturally. There's no high, no hangover, no addiction. Like I said, you can join the feels community, and they get you get feels delivered to your door every month if you do that. You'll save money on every order. You can pause or cancel at any time. I really do believe Feels can help you like it's helped me. CBD is all the craze right now for a reason. Give it a try. There's Time a to di- start feeling better. There's also a difference between the good stuff, like Feels, oh, yeah. and the stuff you buy at like a corner store that's or like- a gas station. You're like, oh, clearly this this eyedropper used to be like for motor oil. And they're you, like, no, 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 no. It's cool, man. You want to go with you want to go with the real deal. The real Feels, deal. F-E-A-L-S. F-E-A-L-S dot com slash freeze to become a member. Get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Our first sponsor. Show them some love. Feels. They're supporting FAM Season 3. It's time to freeze. It's time to freeze. Wow, first time saying that all season. Mm. Okay, next Feels. up. Uh, what's funny, we're not going to touch on this this episode. Maybe it'll be ooh, maybe it'll be a, a <laughs> bonus content <laughs> later. <laughs> there, there's like a VR trailer. They dropped like a Westworld VR experience. Why do they do this? I don't know. It looks kind of tight, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So I'm not, a, I'm not a VR guy, Jared. I don't have the fucking headset or whatever. So the next one we're going to watch is the second to most recent. It is the Incite Anthem trailer. So I recently uh, sang for you mm-hmm. the Imagine it's... Dragons song, Incite Anthem. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember how it went. I'm going to have to go back. What is this really, though? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I didn't do any research. I went. I looked up Westworld trailers. I copied the most recent ones. I mean, I, I really, I'm, I'm concerned that it really might be a music video of some kind. Well, we're about to find out. This one dropped two months ago. 
Uh, you know what I was doing two months ago, Ross? Hmm. Me, me either, dude. I was uh, I went to a bootleg Burning Man festival in an abandoned warehouse where they pumped me full of ketamine and then paraded me around like a dog at the Westminster Dog Show. This sounds like an episode of the Righteous Gemstones almost. Oh. Something Keith would do. Well, I won Best in Show. If you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> if you were wrong with if you, you were wondering. All right, let's get this trailer going. Incite Anthem by Imagine Dragons. I'm very confused about what this is going to be. I know, but you can't talk during it. Okay. I won't talk during it. It's not on yet. Okay, so this is a uh, insightinc.com they always is the do URL this. provided. They always drop a, a new website or an updated website that they want you to check out. And I'm sure we, we could easily, and I will, s- click through that for two hours because there's going to be a ton of like random stuff. Okay, so here's what I gathered from this. And based on what I saw like in the description when I copied and pasted it, it's kind of what I thought it was going to be. It is a It is a fake commercial for a fake company that clearly exists in the in the Delos world in the West world you know universe. universe so it seems like this company is a biotechnology company that puts a computer in your brain that is that's what I'm getting from it this. causes your eyes to then be able to like do crazy yeah almost um what's it when you're Compu- cyborgy stuff yeah yeah it seems to me so there was a book that a young adult book that we started reading in class <laughs> actually it's a really stupid story and this is in a – for some reason, in my ninth grade English class, we still, like, every day spent, like, five minutes reading a book for the whole class. And, like, we'd get through a whole book, you know, after a sure. few weeks. And one of them was called The Feed. And it was literally about this. It was about a future where everybody had a computer in their head. Like, you got a chip implanted behind your ear, and it made it so that, like, you could – your your vision was optimized with a, essentially a computer screen – you know, it was like your, it was like Google Glass, but inside your brain. Right, right. And after, I think it was after like four days, the teacher stopped reading like mid chapter and was like, are, "Are you guys enjoying this? Because it doesn't really seem like you guys are into this." And we're like, "Yeah, this book kind of sucks." And so we picked a new book. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, Westworld season three is better than the feed. Uh, shouts to the feed. I would hope so. I would hope so very much. Um, yeah. So Delos is the only company we'd ever heard of until this this teaser here, this trailer, whatever you want to call it. Um. What the fuck is vaporware? I don't know. I was wondering. Maybe that's a cool. F- let's look. Let's look it up. We can. We can look it up. I don't even know what that would. What that means. Well, or what that vaporwave entails. is a style of me. Oh, vaporware. vaporware. Oh, okay. Uh, vaporware, software or hardware that has been advertised but is not yet available to buy, either because it is only a concept or because it is still being written or designed. Okay. So it's like they're saying they are. They're in market already. They're not. This is not like a future product. The Cybertruck, where you can't sure. buy it yet, and they're probably going to change it up a ton. Now the thing we see that's really. Uh, it gives us an idea of what maybe we're dealing with here is when the eye zooms in on the eye and we see all the different yeah. shit going on in the eyeball, giving us the impression that perhaps this is – there was an episode of um, – oh, my God. What's the technology show on Netflix? Black Mirror. There was an episode of Black Mirror that dealt with this sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, the, and they're banging in the bed and they're, like, th- looking at different things. You can run shit back, like rewind yeah, in your yeah, brain yeah. or whatever. Oh, and then so, he, oh he, like, he, like, got really pissed and he – you like I don't want to ruin it. No, don't don't spoil the episode. Jared, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, explore Black Mirror. Black, Black Mirror years ago. season two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but it but it to to that point, it is a very interesting part of the technological conversation going forward. When we start to introduce these things, we've started with wearable tech. Eventually, it'll be biotech. We all know that's going to happen. It's already begun in some cases. Um, and what is that going to do to our lives? And how is it going to make them more complicated or whatever? And and Westworld sort of delving into that arena, another cool wrinkle. The thing that gets concerning again is are there too many elements being introduced at one time here? We've got Nazis. We've got a whole new company. We're also going to be dealing with the Delos shit and all of our characters from seasons one and two. We got Aaron Paul. It's a lot for eight episodes, bro. 
It is. That's the one thing that every time we get a new piece, I'm like, how are they going? <laughs> how? But you gotta, you gotta have. That's the ride. You know, figure seeing how they pull it off Lisa is sort Joy, of the, that's Joe part of the Nolan, show. They got their work cut out for them. That's for sure. Turns out they're smart and good at this. You know, I want to jump into some some commentary. Every once in a while, I'll have like real commentary. That's not just me like making a terrible joke about of going to bootleg Burning Man's. Okay. So I think I enjoy the shitty version, but okay. Yeah, me too. So I think that this might be somewhat of a commentary. I mean, this whole season might be somewhat of a commentary on, like you were saying, biotech. So if you look at all technology, it uh, okay. I'm trying to think of a good way to phrase this. So technology starts out usually for the like benefit of human beings but like that's undeniable for example there's a positive impact yes. that is undeniable so oh of course we're going to create the internet because we want to be able to share information sh learn share medical quickly. studies with each other across college campuses share our research with each other okay sure. of course we want to have walkie talkies so our so our military commanders can talk to each other well, and of, can of be course interested. we want cell phones so that we can instantly connect and communicate and send each other pictures and videos and so, blah, blah, blah. so it starts out being always well, it starts out always being the point I'm trying to make is uh. starts out being very research focused, very for the benefit of humanity as a whole. Sure. Then once that technology gets advanced enough, they're like, we're going to roll this out to regular humans, right? Sure. So obviously, the internet was originally for research. Now we use it for whatever the fuck we use it for, porn. Mostly. Exactly everything. You know, phones originally used for communication for law enforcement or whatever, or for government or for military, and now those get rolled out. And so right now, biotech, it's all – almost all biotech that's mainstream is for health purposes. It's, you think the OG phone was just for the government? No, I'm, I'm saying like – You're shitting on Alexander Graham Bell's you know what great I'm saying. dream? You know what I'm saying. No, I know what you're saying. Like walkie-talkies, like instant communication. Yes, yes, yes. Was, it was like they're, – they're, it's always like here's why we're doing it. Look at all the great things we're going to do. You don't think about all the stuff regular people are going to use it for, right? Well, it's like social media is a great one too. It's uh, – you know, it was invented to connect us all and bring oh, us yeah. closer together. And but then you don't realize like it also apart. destroys us and yeah. tears us further apart. So it's like, hey, technology is So I think with biotech, it's like of course we're going to keep doing – we're going to keep finding ways to integrate technology into human bodies because right now, look, this guy's living way longer because we have this pacemaker. This person's got this stint that can be retracted. Blah, blah, blah. This like, person didn't have a hand. Now they have yes. a robot hand. Yeah, exactly. And so I think it's like right Luke. now we're at the phase where right now we have all this biotech that's being developed every single day, all this technology that soon enough is going to be used for things to make human to make individual lives easier and not human race life easier. That's impossible. Does that make sense? I'm doing Luke Skywalker still. Luke. Sorry, what were you saying? I got to go. no, I'm just going to hurt everything you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, that makes perfect sense, Jared. Um, it's just I'm scared for how we tackle that. I don't know how we tackle that. Inside this, of season three. I think they're going to show us. I think they are too. In Insight is super interesting. If it's like literally connecting all the human brains, that turns humans into robots even more. That's the second time we've seen human beings and now, ro robots. Like, I wonder. Which is which? Here's the thing though. Like, who's walking who? I know. They give, us these, they give us this trailer, this teaser thing though. And then it could be a pretty minuscule part. We might not get introduced to that company until episode eight or something. Yeah. I don't know. That'll be the fun ride we get. They're, they're, they do a good job of advertising the show with all the different cool pieces of marketing. And they do very original marketing and different kinds of things and the websites and these cool fake commercials and shit. And they basically give you, hey, here's all the fun stuff we're going to play with this season. Get excited because just like you, yeah. we have no <laughs> clue what the fuck is going to happen. And that's sort of the way the Westworld marketing works, and it's it's super effective. Like, yeah, I've, we're talking I about it. I have not ever been more excited for a season of this show than I am for season three because of the marketing, because of the trailers we've seen, because of all the cool shit and characters, yep. and Aaron Paul. So time for the uh, the date announced trailer. Oh, the last one? So Yeah, the most recent trailer. So this one dropped one week ago. It's been one week since the trailer dropped. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I've been saving that one all week, actually. Unbelievably yes, thank you. Thank you very much. terrible addition to <laughs> what was already a very, very sketchy podcast. No, I'm just kidding. Phenomenal work. Uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, I so, love your singing voice. It brings me peace. Thank you. And Imagine Dragons, like, I, I, who is that? Bare Naked Ladies? That one was Bare Naked, wasn't it? So well, we, we are now thing. a Bare Naked Ladies, Imagine Dragons uh, fan fiction uh, podcast. Ho home written podcast, yes. Okay, here we go. Most recent trailer. This is the newest thing. This is what they want to show us right now in life, Ross. Hey, okay, I'm paying attention. Shut, shut my computer. Shut up. Jared, shut the fuck up. That's, that's very, that's poignant. Oh, wow. This is topical. Oh, 
That didn't happen yet. What? 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 What the fuck is this? Shut the fuck up, Jared. Second Russian Civil War? Oh my fucking god. Okay, so the dudes whose voice you just heard is the guy who earlier I was like, that guy, I love that guy, he's awesome. But so what was that? I don't, I don't know, I mean, I, I just, what? I, what? Another element? But, they, so, but I'm, I, I, don't, I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm gonna be fully honest with you. That is not what I expected. Uh, I think that was... Uh, cool. I'm just gonna say that first. Um, what? I, dude, I saw the uh, reaction to this on Twitter, and I hadn't watched it yet, obviously, but I had a pretty good idea that it was gonna give us almost nothing and just make everything a lot more confusing. Um, and as a result, I'm not as fucked up as you are right now. But look, what look what I just said, man. This is what they do. They give you shit that you're going to try to sit here and rack your brain to make sense of how it fits in or what it is or how the, it just to drive conversation. And it's exactly it, it's effective. But what the I mean, I, we, they just said no, the pre, they said the future president elect's going to get assassinated in Buenos Aires. They're just making that claim on this on this trailer. Yeah. So it goes through a bunch of dates up through like 2039, I think, or some crazy shit like that. 2059 or some shit. Yeah. So it starts with the ones we've two that we're aware of. Just, like, it was Hong Kong protests, and then it was the, 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 the president, 45th president of the United States. And then it was going to be an Indonesian ecological disaster in like what, May of this year, according so to Westworld. According to Westworld, which, which is like, yeah, Indo how do Indonesians react to this? They're like, wait, wait, what? Do you mind? <laughs> like, wait, are you, did you, what, is this is the first I'm hearing about this? Yeah. The fuck? Uh, no, so it, but it sounds like that they created a system of some kind. One of the dates was the system initiating that was somehow helping to keep society in line, perhaps. And then the system collapsed. Well, it, or there was something introduced to it that now they can't account for, which sounds like Dolores. Like, she's not supposed to be there. Whoa. So the system is fucked up somehow. Wow. I don't know. That was no, 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 no. That, did, you, did you steal that off Reddit? No, I just watched it with you for the first time. <laughs> just now. No, Ross, that was very poignant. I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you. Hashtag poignant is my middle name. No, so I'm trying to find this French guy's name. You talk for a while. I really do think that, that right now your theory is my clubhouse leader. I think that, yeah, all this has happened, which means we can pinpoint essentially what what year the future's in based on when the, the system was initiated, right? Maybe? Or the, Yeah, right, or no, when the disturbance was added or whatever. There's too many things on there that are too confusing to me to be able to make sense of them. But that is an interesting way to drop another trailer with zero footage. I love the way they the did voice. that. I love the way they did it, like how bad each one was. Which, like, I don't know what, what they said was worse, the impeachment of the president or the Hong Kong protests. But I feel like that's, that's sort of a political commentary in itself, right? Which is a bigger deal. We're the Westfield crew and we're going to decide. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I. F I don't know how I feel about that one. I don't. I don't really know I what. Know. I liked the visual re visual representation of like how bad the Earth is, and that is like, oh, we have the system now, and it like makes it all better. And then it's like, oh, actually, did you see that collapse at the end? The what at the end? The collapse. Collapse. It got real. Like, it was so. It was so big. The the system was the problem was so big. It was like worse than every other thing combined. And then and then and then it all blew up. And it the, the spike was bigger. Yeah. Is the spike indicative of how big of an issue whatever it is we're looking at was? I mean, yeah. That's If you look at the different things, it's oh. like that's what they're telling us, like which one's worse. Hot. Thank you, God. That took forever. Thank I've you, Producer Mike. Googling left and right. Vincent Cosell? Cosell. No, uh, Howard. You think of Howard Cosell. <laughs> I'm Howard Cosell. You're welcome to the Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum. So this dude is awesome. He's the teacher in Black Swan. Um, if you're looking for something, just wait. Like Black Swan Yoga down the street, off the top. No, I can the take movie. a class with this guy. The movie, the oh, movie, Jerry. Sorry, the great, great film, Black Swan. Um, 
But uh, what else is he? And I'm trying to find. He's a French guy, though. He's got a French accent. He's clearly going to play a big role in this. Uh, He's in one of the oceans, guys. He's a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's for sure there. Oh, is he the guy, the, the gymnast guy who like goes under all the lasers? Yeah, that guy's tight. No, he's in Eastern Promises as well. I didn't know they made an Eastern Promises two. Mm. Incredible character in Eastern Promises. Eastern Promises is a great movie. If you've never seen it, Eastern Promises. He plays Kirill. Kirill. First thing I ever saw him in, I think maybe. Wow. I don't know, but he's an unbelievable actor. He's very cool. He was in the Jason, one of the Jason Bourne movies. Um, and he's probably the biggest addition here. He was in the Beauty and the Beast. Bigger than Kid Cudi? Much bigger. Much, much bigger. Actual good act. Like, this dude is a legend. Kid Cudi's a, come on, man, he's a rapper who's done one show. Okay. This guy is legit. He's legit. Just trust me. Wow. Okay. Vincent Cassell. Well, that was, that was thoroughly enjoyable. I am happy that I waited and I got all those at once. Like, I just feel like, I, you know when, like, you you go on vacation to the beach and you just like sit down and yeah. let the waves smash you in the face and you're, you're drinking all the water in but you're like I'm at the beach yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, that's not really how I do the beach but it sounds great yeah oh you know yeah it's, you know, it's, it, no it's miserable but like yeah. you're at the beach so. okay okay yeah um it's that's like, what just happened for me it's more like when I I abstain from sexual relations for a month and then I have forty Victoria's Secret models over to my house all at once and it's just too much to handle that's how I felt about this yeah. And then and then you go I, and you cry in a room. And then the cr crying for many many days in a row to 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 relieve this the and then the, everything that's built up inside. You me. should try some feel CBD to relax yes. and get good sleep. F e a l s dot com slash freeze. Absolutely, so stoked for season three, dude. This is uh, the trailers are all one. I mean, each one escalates this insanity yes. a little bit more. The final one being. I'm probably going to spend the rest of my day trying to unpack that. What the fuck? They but, said the president. So I, here's one thing I'll tell you right now, and I legitimately believe this. Whoever schedules where the president goes is going to remember this and make sure the president is nowhere near Buenos Aires, Argentina on that date, they said. Probably the move. Probably right? the move. Like, why Don't would they that adding up? <laughs> I feel like you can, you can move, it, move it a day, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. just even if he's, like, planning, we'll just push it back a day. Oh, absolutely. Got to avoid that, Jared. I mean, you can't die. No. You can't have the president-elect dying. You don't want to die. That does it for the first episode of our season three run of Freeze All Motor Functions uh, right now. I can't tell you when the next episode of Freeze All Motor Functions will be. Could be next week, could be in a month. What I can tell you is a following at Freeze All Motor on Twitter and at Freeze All Motor Functions on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be where you'll get all that info as soon as it becomes available. So make sure you do that right now or Ross will mollywop you. It's true. I will. If your name is Michael and you don't follow us on Twitter and Instagram, you're a jerk. <laughs> you're a real jerk. <laughs> Liam, listen, I know you're there. And Liam, you I always know pick you, Liam. Why I've, do you always? What's like the name Liam have to do with? Have you? we done a Liam before? You, you do Liam every weekend. Listen, Harvey, it's it's <laughs> it's important that you pay attention to the words coming out of my mouth, Harv. Uh, we we all know you're there. We all know you haven't subscribed. You haven't rated and reviewed either. You also haven't told anybody else about Famp. It's time for you to Famp. do your thing. The Famp Fam needs you. The Famp Fam is here. Famp Famp Fam, we're back. We're excited to do this with you. Got some exciting announcements coming up. Time for the NPR style sign off. Freeze All Motor Functions is brought to you by Bolin Media and hosted by me, Jared Borislow, along with Ross Bolin. This show is recorded by Mike Moody and Grant Davis at Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. Special thanks to Phil from DC, aka Schnapple, on SoundCloud for our intro music, Brad Hess for our outro music, and intern Serena, who does or who is going to start doing awesome Westworld photoshops for us again that you can find on our social media again shortly. To see them, Serena. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Freeze All Motor. And she'll Instagram. be on the show, by the way. She will be on the show. Yeah. She'll be live in Stu. She's coming in. Uh, she's trying to get two in with us, I think. She's Ooh, supposed to text you tight. Yeah. about dates or something. Yeah, we need to figure out the dates so yeah. I can tell her. Right? Yes. She'll text you and then you'll text me. Yeah, okay, yeah. Why don't we just group text? Yeah. Like normal people. It makes the most sense. Is yeah. that, are, are, can our phones do that now? I don't know. This is a long sign off. I have a walkie talkie, not a phone. Oh, shit. Uh, Freeze All Motor. Wait, at Freeze All Motor on, on Twitter. At Freeze All Motor Functions on Instagram. I will see you soon. Follow us on social media. I just said that like five times. I know, but really make sure you do. Oh, no. Yeah, All of it. them. Follow us. Yes, do it. Please. Thank yeah, you. that's where you're going to get announcements about the new episodes. We're stoked. Fam. Season three coming soon. March what? 15th. F yeah. 25th? 15th. There's a five in there. Are you calling from a walkie-talkie? Why do walkie-talkies keep coming up? Fam. We should leave. <laughs> Fam. 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 Fam.